wasn't there a Chappelle show skit about this? <laughs> where um it was like black people and light and pictures i don't remember but racist. that's why I, I said it apple is racist not illuminating our beautiful selves there you go okay. <laughs> <laughs> i mean my skin's always looking like it's glowing so i can work on you I'm just joking, that was a joke. To you need to put a koala in there. Girl. It just make everything better. You don't need a koala. Welcome everyone, everyone to uh, the listener Q&A's part two for Lies of Omission. I, of course, am Sticky Keys. That over there is uh, Momo. Hey. <laughs> what? Huh? What are you trying to say? Um... We are doing part two of our Q and A's. We're just gonna go down the rest because y'all showed up and showed out and just sent us so many wonderful questions and we love them. I uh, wanted to talk about a couple of things real quick. Um, so actually, this lighting's really good for my face now. Yay! Perfect. We're gonna post that in our Say page. parfait. So. Um, Ian Bowen. My husband, who's yes. always messy. Yeah, I know. He said, just ran into, just almost tackled Dwayne Wade at a party when I thought he was Cinqua. And so this girl. They look too very different. <laughs> so this girl. But you know quite what? Quite correct. Shadily. Say, well, hold on. Shadily, but quite correctly responded. What? Because all black people look alike? He said, no, you dick. <laughs> so <laughs> Are they like the same height, maybe the same complexion? They're not the same complexion. I was like, I was like, maybe I the same height. I, I don't really know say, how tall. I don't think Dwayne they're the same Wade complexion, is. but I'm like, I'm trying to think in my head. Isn't Cinco well just a little bit darker? Yeah, but they don't look alike. <laughs> and so they don't look alike at all. What I'm hoping is that it was from the back, and maybe I don't know. I all have I mistaken know, people for people. I have. I'm gonna be honest. I have mistaken people for other people if their back is certain. Which is fine. Until they turn around like, ooh, that's not you. That's not them. Good thing I didn't call you out and then try to embarrass myself. The problem is that with Ian Bohan, he gets, he's already gotten flack for being like racially ignorant and racially insensitive. He's yes. done cute little tweets uh, during Ferguson and uh, that kind of thing where you're just like, okay, boo-boo. You know, <laughs> you're like, okay. So, you know, from Colton Haynes, I could see him, he knows better now than to say this, mm -hmm. but I can see him saying something like that. From Ian, mm, you're so shady, boo. Yeah, like you are so shady, boots. And so, He really yeah. is shady enough that I agree that, that... That was not a great idea. <laughs> and the thing is that with Colton, he can be that shady, but he'll be like, but you still love me. Ian exactly. is the shady where people are going to be like, you know what? Pass. <laughs> I said I'm friendly, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. There you go. It's much better. All right. Um, let's see what other fandom shenanigans have happened. We'll see. So, you know what, Peter? Just be Peter. <laughs> don't don't be Ian Bohan. I'm gonna be. Or Ian Bohan, don't be Peter. I don't see Peter doing. So never mind. I want Peter to come back and take Theo under his wing. Styles can be their spoiled pet. And I'm gonna put hashtag puppy play. And I'm like hashtag I'm there to watch. And <laughs> How about this on the <clears throat> U N A vid. I mean, not saying anything, but I'm just saying that would be very enjoyable. Not here. All right, Ryan with cupcake. Mason cares deeply about Corey's death. He's never going <laughs> to get any. Liam needs to make it up for him. He's True. never going to get no any. No one cares about Corey, Ryan. No one cares about Corey. He's never going to get any, is he? He will. No, he's not. I've already decided that that's, like, the thing that he won't get is he won't get and any. And I bet that's actually part of it, because I bet that, um, uh... Jeff will be like, look, you're black, you're gay, you're on here, you don't actually need love. 
probably would. You would be that asshole who, who would say that. It's such a mess. I am so done with Jeff Davis. His lame excuses of co-writers have pissed me off beyond belief. First, they wrote off my baby Arden with that dumb hashtag. Then they broke up Skiles with some dumb OOC argument. And according to Jeff Davis, they'll never be the same again. <clears throat> I'm done. F Teen Wolf. I agree. I agree. Um, it's really weird because, so they've always been like, Skittles, Skiles has always been the backbone. Scott and uh, Styles have always carried the emotional backbone of the show. They are the representative of what the show represents. But I'm like, you clearly said that their relationship was almost irreparable. That it was going to, it was never going to be a same because a lot of trust left. So what does that tell us about your show? <laughs> you know, just like, and why does that make me want to continue watching it? Yeah. Because I really don't, but y'all have both. Ground hound, greyhound girl. Kiss to the girl. moon. Kiss up to the moon. What? Oh, I know. Going right to the kisser. Wait, no, that's Arsenio. Wait, he, he used to do this. Okay, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. I was like, Arsenio I know. Arsenio was woof, woof, woof. Woof, woof, woof. Honeymooners were Honey, one right to yeah. the kisser. Wow, that. Right in the kisser. And then I'm coming to this bed. <laughs> this ain't no damn. <laughs> Sam Rathon. Every yes. single freaking moment, he, every five minutes, he was like, I'm coming, I'm coming for you. And I'm like, and his son would be on the side just like, Dad, <laughs> you too old for this. Sanford and Son, man. That is such a good show. You know what's One funny? of my neighbors has it on DVD, and um, my mom and I used to always like just borrow it and watch it because it's just so funny. Sanford and Son was one of the, I wasn't a huge fan of, but I, I knew if I was going over my dad's, mm -hmm. it would be playing, like, Sanford and Son, Perry Mason. You have to be older to get, <laughs> exactly. to understand the jokes of Sanford and Son because a yeah. lot of that stuff was Woo. humor that you needed to be in your twenties, thirties, and forties. You had to be older, older. and experienced to get it. Mm -hmm. And as Perry a kid, Mason it's like we my, should not. Well. Yeah, Perry Mason was my show though. Paul People Drake. don't understand. Mm. People don't understand. Kojak, Perry Mason, and I used to watch a lot of Matt Log because my, I did like Matt uh, Log. Columbo. And Columbo, yes, those were my shows. I didn't care. I was a young kid, a teenager. Oh, girl, Matt Love, Murder, She still Wrote, today, Diagnosis yes. Murder, Dr. Quinn Medicine. Oh, my dad Dr. watched Quinn was all the only of one them. I didn't watch. Oh, and Walker, Texas, Texas Ranger. Ranger! Yes! Before I realized that Chuck no, Norris uh, is crazy as fuck, where I still had like, <laughs> he's a crazy ass Republican. Crazy. And Conrad. <laughs> yes. Because I was so mad on Matlock when they got rid of Tyler, mm -hmm. and then they brought on Conrad, and I was like, it ain't the same. <laughs> and then he was on Walker, and I was like, it ain't the same. But it's so funny, because I was just like, every time I see certain people, and I'm like, wait, you were in Top Gun, you were in this 80s movie, like, yeah. all of them were in different ages, so I'm just like, okay, this is my life. Gutenberg is doing a remake of... I heard. Something. Uh-huh. I can't remember what it was, but I'm like, Gutenberg. Like, well, people don't even know who Gutenberg was, and he was huge, huge. for well, me. Well, my friend Kelly didn't know who he was. We were watching Lava for uh, Tarantula because uh, they were doing yeah, yeah, that's what it, yep, yep, yep. And I was just like, is that <laughs> Steve Gutenberg? I literally was like, because we were watching Sharknado Week and it had yeah. to come on to, and there's a random cameo. Ugh, no. <laughs> Kelly's obsessed. Kelly's my grandma. She, my grandma and Kelly were like obsessed with. Uh, I listened to How Did This Get Made, and so they always do Sharknado. Yeah. But. Kelly's like, I don't know who that guy is. And I'm like, you don't know who Steve Gutenberg? I'm like, you're my age. Green Men and a Baby. Green Men and a Baby. Cocoon. Yeah. One of the biggest sci-fis of the time. Cocoon. How do you not know that? Mess. Messy. Ah. Greyhounds, Sorry. girl. I but know. people. Diagnosis murder. Dick Van Dyke. That's some shit. Yes. That's the shit. Love it. Love it. And you be loving some um, Andrew Lansbury's ass, too. Mm -hmm. When you watch uh, Murder, Murder, She Wrote. wrote. Yep. You be like, this old heifer, this... Always in someone's she's business. she's solving them crimes. <laughs> but she's always in someone's business. And I'm like, dude, is a murder not going to happen around you? Except when she's invited to actually solve the murder. And I'm like, okay. I got but, that's, but you know what she be causing half of them? <laughs> <laughs> Just so she can write a book. She's like, it's research. <laughs> <laughs> that's so wrong. So Greyhounds Girl says, okay, I'm not watching. So if this makes no sense, sorry. <laughs> I've seen theories that the pack has known that Theo was evil all along and are just setting him up. Mm -hmm. Could it be just? Could it just be that Scott? Who knows? Meaning, Styles thinks their fight is real, but Scott is just acting for Theo's benefit. 
keeping Styles in the dark like he did with Derek in season two. I only know what's going on thanks to you all, but I'm totally on Styles' side. Can't wait for the podcast. I said it before, I say it again. If that happens, we are done. There's no way. And I, and I believe that they would, they would do that. Yeah. And they'd be like, oh, S- Scott figured out about Theo all along and I just had to sell it. And it's okay. I didn't really believe that because that's the only way that you repair that friendship. Mm-hmm. And even then, you don't repair it because it's like, dude, you could have let me know. You know, like out of the actors, I'm clearly the better liar. I totally could have played that off. But, um, <laughs> oh my God, if they do that, That's I will rail. So I will be so upset. So, the thing but, that's sad is that it's so true. It's so true and it's so possible. So, I don't even know. <sighs> you know, this thing is going to make me mad. You make me mad, iPad. Um, oh, they. Do you think Stora was the first attempt of the no homo cock block until they realized that they would have had to give us platonic steric? Because it would have been weird if Styles didn't have any interaction with his brother-in-law. <laughs> LMAO, I would have so been here for platonic steric and Cora Braden interactions. Mm. In order for them to get away with that, they would have had to clearly, they would have had to have a very good relationship with their fandom, specifically the Steric fandom. If that happens, if you are going to put, because right now they've put Styles with Malia's cousin. Yeah. I mean, with uh, Derek's cousin, and people hate it, you know, in, in those terms, especially Steric, because it's like, now if he tries to get with Derek, it's like, ugh, you know, you're with my cousin. Just think of it as like, ugh, now you're with my sister. <laughs> you know? It's like, ugh. Why are putting that in my head? Well, and so, I just, they would have had to sell it. That's a different, that's a different show. It's a different showrunner, and it's a different group of writers. That's the only way that it would work. It wouldn't work at all with the current setup. Which is too bad. Um... Let's see. Oh, Cody sent us one. God. Oh, um, okay. Let's just do that. Anonymous says, I know Jeff wants to end the show with Skittles, but any resolution to this rift will be hollow. That relationship is so broken down that it needs to be demolished and rebuilt. Styles is too dependent on Scott and his love and approval, and Scott is too sure that Styles will always be there for him and always follow. There's no equality in it because they both need or expect more than the other can give, <laughs> so one will always burn himself up for the other one. Right now, that's Styles, and the problem is that's been Styles for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, the most that we've seen that of Scott is his um, interaction with the Nagitsune. And I feel like that interaction colored a lot of the Scott style scene. I think that Scott has never really fully forgiven that or forgotten that. You know what? That's probably really true. If you really do think about that, I Mm -hmm. I actually agree with that. I think think this was the pin, the pin, the the straw that broke the camel's back. I think, yeah, he was like, because the fact that he could believe that Styles, there's a difference between being angry. Mm Mm-hmm. Being violent and lashing out in self defense mm-hmm. and going ham. <laughs> and he was willing to believe that and his he friend went was. Ham. Yeah. And it's like, if you want to believe, if you are at the point where you can believe that of your friend, if you call them a friend, then you should be able to accept that. Mm-hmm. And that's not something that Scott's going to be able to do. And I see them both I was being. Say. I was like, girl. Um... That's going to be something. You know, it, um, we talked about this a little bit. I said, this show thought that Scott was an infallible character. They thought that he was sympathetic. And for season one, season... Um, season one and, like, the first part of season two, he was. We rooted for Scott. We were like, yeah, go, Scott, go. When they made him this true alpha, they made him an archetype, but he was undefined. 
And so we don't know exactly what led him to be a true alpha. Mm -hmm. We don't know what being a true alpha meant, but we know that it pedestalized him. Pedestalized him. It put him on a pedestal. It made it so that everyone looked up to him, and he became the shining example of moral superiority. Which you don't always need when you're in a supernatural type show. You don't. It doesn't really work in a supernatural show unless you accept your counterpart. Unless you can get someone who is going to be your muscle, who is going to be your enforcer. Exactly. And the problem is that by... Exactly. exactly. They feel like they're putting Scott through these trials and that we're rooting for him to get through these trials. But it feels like comeuppance. They turned a saint and turned him into a sinner. And I'm like, people don't like seeing a fall from grace without learning from it. Without learning from it. You know, you like they put Sam through hell. But Sam has come out the other side a little bit stronger for it. Even when, you know, he might be weak in some areas. And there might be some, uh, some things that he needs to, you know, flesh up on. But for the most part, when Sam goes through, you know that there's going to be at least some minor satisfying re- resolution at the end of it. Yeah, if you never think about it. <laughs> If you think about it, Sam's been through a lot more than Dean. Oh, God. Dean, Dean, yeah. Dean's been through some shit. Like, I'm not going to say this. Dean Winchester has been through some shit, especially when he was in hell and in purgatory. But Sam went through a lot of emotional well, shit. Well, even Sam coming out of the regular world and mm-hmm. being dragged into the supernatural yeah. world that Dean had been a part of for much, much longer. Yeah, because remember, he was able to escape because he only had some childhood memories, but then Sam. he was able to leave. And then, which technically he ran away, but let's talk about that. <laughs> but, you know, he was able to they're gonna get into school and everything. I don't know how the hell he got into school. We can talk about that. Hey. But, you know, that, <laughs> those hacking skills come in sometimes. But he was. He was dragged back into it, and then he lost his mind to Lucifer. <laughs> like, I was just gonna say, the best, best season ever was Lucifer's season. Yeah, it was good. That was so good. I was just like, baby boy, and then he was sleeping with demon left and right, and you're like, Sam would never sleep with demon. Oh, Sam would. But then even on the other side of it, it was all understandable. You Mm -hmm. understood every bit of that fall. Every single thing that he was actually doing. You understood all the dark sides from both. And the thing is that they always did it thinking more, like, thinking that it was for the best. Yes. And they always got their confidence. And that's the thing that Teen Wolf doesn't have. It doesn't show consequences. It doesn't show consequences. It doesn't show follow through. Damn it. Supernatural has actually done something. We're like, okay, actually, that's really smart to close heaven down because heaven, heaven has a bunch of assholes. And you're like, wait a second. Ooh, there's a... Oh, yeah. You're oh. <laughs> like, oh, that wasn't a good... Idea. But you can tell they've thought hard uh-huh. about that. The problem with Scott is that there's... Like, why does Scott have asthma? What is it... We know that he had asthma as a kid. We mm-hmm. know that it was something why that made him back? feel insecure. Is it an anxiety thing? Is it a panicky thing? Is it someone getting into his mind? And why aren't more people concerned about that? He's literally walking around with now, an inhaler. my theory mm-hmm. is that the pack, because the pack doesn't talk to each other, they either don't know, but you also have a lot of younger people in the pack. Yeah. A lot of people who didn't know Scat beforehand. Beforehand, exactly. The only people in the pack that actually knew Scat beforehand Styles was and Lydia. Styles and Lydia. And really and just Lydia, Styles, because Lydia, Lydia didn't Lydia care. wasn't really a friend. She kind of knew him because he happened to be another guy on the, on the lacrosse team, and then he ended up starting to date Alex, and that was her friend. That's actually really, if you look at it, that was the only reason she ended up knowing Sky. Styles is the only one who technically should, but the rift between him and Styles that has been since the Kissing storyline mm-hmm. has been. And the problem is, though, I don't think about. that the writers have thought that through. Mm-hmm. And so, and this is what happens. Which Fandom, is sad that we actually have it more down pat. They should let us write the show. Girl. I swear. Fandom if this makes show these was written by me and Stacy with some input from Meg and Josh, mm-hmm. this would be one of the best shows ever. Because I love me some supernatural yeah. fantasy shows. So I'd be like, let's throw in this. Okay, this yeah. is how you write the storyline. We, we can't mess this up. <laughs> exactly. You Which and Josh would throw in every single gay type that comes in. But you guys would be correct about it. Right. And then Meg would be like, let's throw in something cute. But yes. weird. Because Meg yes. is totally the cute and weird thing. She'd be like, let's make him this. But he has a dark soul. And I'm like, people think I'm dark. The one. <laughs> if someone's gonna be a serial killer, it's gonna be her. Exactly. I don't know how I got the stereotype. So I, well, 
So um, I don't know how I got mm-hmm. the stereotype. I'm only reading this because um, it does bring up an interesting uh, conversation, but uh, but it is super shady. <laughs> super shady. Always cool. shady. Come up, but I feel you. So, um, baby. I don't know why I'm saying that song. I know, right? But whatever works. It says, I feel guilty saying this, but I really get bad secondhand embarrassment when I see Posey acting. <laughs> I was talking to someone about this this morning. Posey's not necessarily a bad actor, but Posey has his wheelhouse. Posey does really great with happy-go-lucky, kind of like, yeah, you know, kind of like optimistic, especially in regards to Scott McCall. Where he falters is if you give him emotionally heavy scenes that call for dramatics. He is, he, he can do a quiet crime scene, the scene he had with Melissa. Yeah. Very nice. Very understated. Lovely. Perfectly that was done. Nice scene. That was very nice. That was nice. very well acted. But then the dying scene with Allison, <laughs> and you're like, Posey, what are, are you doing? About that? The um, there was another scene where like whenever he gets stabbed, he gets this kind of look on his face, so you're just like, you are going way over the top, and you don't need to. But it's not endearing. But it makes I you look like a try it so hard. much. Well, to laugh at it. <laughs> but then you know, so I was saying, I was like something like. Holland is a perfect example. Yeah. Um, people either love Holland's acting or they hate Holland's acting. That's and true. there is very little in between. I personally like it to be more dramatic. Mm-hmm. And so I love it. I'm like, you know, give me all the facial tics and give me all the weird vocal cues and that kind of stuff. You put her in a scene with J- J- Dame Julie Dench and she's being Lydia, I'm here for it. However, if you try to give her something outside of her wheelhouse, she falters. She does. And that's why when we have scenes with... And it's not hate, it's just that we're pointing it's it just, out. Yeah, it's just how it is. When you get scenes, like Scott and Styles have had excellent scenes together. Mm-hmm. But even during the Nagitsune scene, you can almost see uh, Scott slipping into Tyler Posey. Instead of just being, it was a little too... <laughs> You know, and it was just like, really bring it back, I Scott. totally, bring totally back. understand everything you just said. Exactly. So, yeah, I like it, but um, he'll, he'll, get, he'll get better. He'll grow. Will he? <laughs> okay. Anonymous says, but if they bring Void back, they won't. Just let me dream here. Then Styles can go dark and then pull himself back and leave at the end of season five to heal and piece himself back together like he should have done at the end of 3B. He can come back when he's better at the end of season six with Derek for the series finale. That and Skipping Town are the only endings I'll accept for Styles. Nobody in Beacon Hills has his back, really, so he should go find people who will. He really, he if there is ever a case for someone needing to find themselves, it's Styles Stalinsky. I can agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um... You said it earlier, and uh, it was true that Scott and Styles kind of has no one but Scott. They've just gotten lost in each other, and they've known each other for, you know, all this time, and they're just kind of there. Mm -hmm. As scared as Styles is to leave and to be alone, I think that he needs, and it's something that Teen Wolf doesn't do. But it would benefit. It would benefit. Uh, someone was like, Malia Cho Styles. And I was like, he's literally the only option for her. I was going to say, the only option? <laughs> like, there's no That's other. not choosing. And I'm like, and then they get mad at Lydia for not automatically choosing Styles. And it's like, if she doesn't want to be with him or doesn't see him in that way, you know, that can change. But at least she has the option. Exactly. So that if it comes out that she does choose him, it will be you know, a real thing. It'll be a real relationship. Whereas we don't know, that's why, that's why Theo is so important being here for Malia, because we don't know if Malia's with Styles because there's no one else and she doesn't know anything else (laughs) or because she really likes him. And I'm like, I don't know that she can really say that she likes him Um, after having known him for this little bit of time. Plus it's an adjusted version of him. So what, like, I don't know. It just, it makes me sick. It makes me sick. 
I love you, but I'm hating it. Got me lit like a candlestick. What's the last part? Oh, when you touch the tip of your nose, I would give you my pants. Oh my god. Actually, hey. really yay. Ew, no. My friend got blocked by Ian Bowen. <laughs> What I Ian Bowen is away <laughs> from the Twitter. When it gets to the point that you're blocking people, put down your phone. What did you go do? Go watch no, some no, no. Netflix. Wait, what did you do to get blocked? <laughs> Was did, this the Dwayne Wade thing? <laughs> I hope so. I kind of hope so. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, he needs to be told. Let's it's be honest. Ridiculous. And then, so his t-shirt campaign has only sold like 117 shirts. <laughs> and I'm like, that's what you get for being shady. Like, I love you, Ian, but God dang, help yourself, my brother. Help yourself. Can we want to talk about that? She's the girl. She said, I, Janisha Dye is fantastic. Take care of your kidney. <laughs> um, okay, so. <laughs> so, um, we were talking the other day about how the descriptions for these episodes on Comcast make no sense. On Comcast Direct TV, none of them make any sense. So Which I agree Jam with. Jamisha Dodd uh, sent... This in it says while Scott turns to an unlikely ally for help, Styles and Lydia try to uncover the truth about Parrish. Starring Holland Roden, Arden Cho, Dylan O'Brien, Tyler Posey, and Malia Tate. <laughs> Dude, that really says that. That really says that. Actually, what's really funny, that cop car, uh, I think that's something that Greg was watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but the fact that they actually <laughs> Shelly wasn't even worth a name. How do you not worth a name? Spell it. <laughs> oh my god, this they How do you not even worth your name? Like <laughs> that's that is Oh my god. Okay, so I love you, Twitter. Oh. Tell Ethan that he better not be using void styles to he's, tell he's you that you it. can't block you him. You can't block me. <laughs> so, um, let's see. <laughs> I worry about baby boy sometimes. Cody sent us a good one. Um, a shipper of many, lovely Cody. What's, oh, there we go. Uh, he says, Sticky, I think for the first time, this is the first time in forever that we actually got into the mind of Scott McCall. That opening scene where Scott just talks about everything he's feeling and dealing with are actually kind of good. I kind of had to side eye. I thought you were joking, Cody. <laughs> but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, because finally, I don't have to water down, uh, I don't have the water down, don't kill people, or Scott has an idea, but we didn't get any clue about what. Uh, it is until he saved the day. Finally, I don't have... Gotcha. Finally, I don't have the watered down, don't kill people, or Scott has an idea, but we don't get any clue about what it is until he saved the day. This is one of the few times I felt like I got a real understanding of where Scott is mentally. And I wish it hadn't taken like four seasons for us to actually get things from his perspective at such length. Also, Theo is just winning all the awards, lol. It really is. Dark Pack is everything I want out of Teen Wolf, minus the Teen Wolf, of course, lol. Please give me Dark Kitsune and Void Styles. I could live off of this. And then they, yeah. So, um. And they can be a threesome. I, at first I was like, Cody, no, that was awful. But then I was like, wait, I understand what he's saying. Um. He so need, that is the most awesome group. And he would be a fantastic evil overlord. Well, um, no, I mean, about Scott. They, uh, this is the first time that we, because usually what happens is a bunch of bad stuff goes down. True. Some, there's a time jump, and then all of a sudden there's a plan. Scott has a plan. That's true. It happened with Gerard. It happened with, uh, Nagitsune Styles. It, uh, didn't quite happen with Jennifer. That was a little bit different. But I want to say it happened to Peter, except Derek kind of thwarted the plan at the last minute and was like, I'm the alpha now. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, 
I think that is interesting but that we do see we this also need part to point of Scott. Out that Scott isn't always the one who actually solves anything. Well, but we don't know that because we never see the process. So what happens is all the credit goes to Scott. But I'm like, just like Cody said, you know, you're just a little too late. <laughs> Um, and people say, I'm the shady one. Yeah. I swear, the other three people on this podcast are way shadier than I am. And yet, I get the bad rap. I just I don't understand this. It's just too... Because doing it this way... Because if Scott comes out with a plan... Especially now, if we've seen his descent, but we don't see him planning in mm -hmm. it... Well, we're not going to know until 5B anyway. This is going to be a cliffhanger, and I'm just like, I'm just not even here for it. I'm not here for any of it. Thank you for your question, because it's actually really awesome. I, I appreciated it. Um, okay, so season, oh, Juliana CG17, our fave, she sent a picture of her with uh, little Derek, and, oh, or really? little Styles, really? and it was so cute. She's adorable. Her nails are fantastic. <laughs> Um, okay, so season finale next Monday, and we have no Derek, which means we won't be getting the now traditional season finale Derek baiting scene. Do you think they'll try to bait Derek somehow, or will uh, will they be swapping for a Stidia baiting scene this year? I um, think I think they're going to mention Derek because isn't what you're supposed to show Brayden up. is supposed Brayden to show Brayden is supposed up. to pop up, so therefore Derek will be mentioned. And we're going to get a shot of Styles all of a sudden right after she mentions him. Or she's going to be looking right at Styles. <laughs> we totally yeah, agree. She's going to be like, yeah, um, you know, Derek's down in Mexico and Styles is going to be like. <laughs> exactly. And then on top of that, I think instead of doing a studio baiting, I think they're going to do a studio baiting. Because they want it to be the new. <sighs> But I'm kind of here with so, so that's a weird thing. There are so many different directions it can go, but I do think at the end of it, Styles is going to be at a crossroads. I can mm -hmm. either keep trying with Scott, or I can go be murder boyfriends with Theo. Murder boyfriends! Murder, murder, murder boyfriends! Murder, murder boyfriends! But, um, yeah. I, every good soul. If we got an elongated dark style. And it's just oh, a, I have right. I'm like, oh, I love the it. Hair standing up for that. <laughs> that makes me seem like such a freak. <laughs> I really, I'm not. Okay, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I just like things that I like. Okay. So that's okay. Um, we are going to pause right now. Uh, we might come back and do a couple more. Um, we're going to do some cooking so we can get some food in our stomachs. And it's going to be num num nums. We'll see you in a few. Bye.